Today is the fourth Sunday in Advent. Today, the mystery of salvation is celebrated because our Blessed Mother, Mary, put her life at the service of God's plan. The celebrant of this Mass is Father James O'Driscoll. The Mass is being offered for the repose of the souls of Michael Berry and Carol Engman. Our gathering song can be found in the Green Book at number 279, O Come Divine Messiah, number 279. Please stand and join in the singing. Drop down dew from above you heavens, and let the clouds rain down the just one. Let the earth be opened and bring forth a savior. This mass is being celebrated for Michael Beery and Carol Engman. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you are the light prophesied by the patriarchs and matriarchs, awaited by the prophets of old. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the light welcomed by Mary and Joseph of old, Christ have, mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the light, the glorious light that will come on the last day at the resurrection of all to judge the living and the dead and to take your people home. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. 
Pour forth, we beseech you, O Lord, your grace into our hearts, that we, to whom the incarnation of Christ, your Son, was made known by the message of an angel, may, by his passion and cross, be brought to the glory of his resurrection, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The readings begin in the middle of the book at number 868 at the bottom of the page for the fourth Sunday of Advent B, 868. A reading from the second book of Samuel. When King David was settled in his palace, and the Lord had given him rest from his enemies on every side, he said to Nathan the prophet, Here I am living in a house of cedar, while the ark of God dwells in a tent? Nathan answered the king, Go do whatever you have in mind, for the Lord is with you. But that night, the Lord spoke to Nathan and said, Go tell my servant David, thus says the Lord, should you build me a house to dwell in? It was I who took you from the pasture and from the care of the flock to be commander of my people Israel. I have been with you wherever you went, and I have destroyed all your enemies before you. And I will make you famous like the great ones of the earth. I will fix a place for my people Israel. I will plant them so that they may dwell in their place without further disturbance. Neither shall the wicked continue to afflict them as they did of old, since the time I first appointed judges over my people Israel. I will give you rest from all your enemies. The Lord also reveals to you that he will establish a house for you. And when your time comes and you rest with your ancestors, I will raise up your heir after you, sprung from your loins, and I will make his kingdom firm. I will be a father to him, and he shall be a son to me. Your house and your kingdom shall endure forever before me. Your throne shall stand firm forever. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, to him who can strengthen you, according to my gospel in the proclamation of Jesus Christ, according to the revelation of the mystery kept secret for long ages, but now manifested through the prophetic writings and according to the command of the eternal God, made known to all nations to bring about the obedience of faith to the only wise God through Jesus Christ. Be glory forever and ever. Amen. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. be with you a reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke the angel Gabriel was sent from God to a town of Galilee named Nazareth to a virgin betrothed to a man named Joseph of the house of David and the virgin's name was Mary and coming to her he said hail full of grace the Lord is with you but she was greatly troubled at what was said and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. Then the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. Behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give him the throne of David his father, and he will rule over the house of Jacob forever. And of his kingdom, there will be no end. But Mary said to the angel, how can this be, since I have no relations with the man? The angel said to her in reply, the Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be called Holy, the Son of God. And behold, Elizabeth, your relative, has also conceived a son in her old age. And this is the sixth month for her who is called barren, for nothing will be impossible for God. Mary said, Behold, I am the handmaid of the Lord. May it be done to me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. The Gospel of the Lord. Pope Benedict, and meditating on the Greek of the salutation of the angel Gabriel to Mary, realized that instead of saying the usual thing that would have been said in a Jewish household at the time, which would be shalom, uh, peace, harmony, and uh, the like, instead he says rejoice to her. Now, this is before she gets the news. And unlike Zechariah, who also had a visitation from the Archangel Gabriel, an Annunciation, in that case that John the Baptist, that they would have a child in their old age, uh, Zechariah the priest and his wife Elizabeth, here... Fear is not what is recorded for Mary. She's startled, but she ponders what this might mean. And she gives a ready yes when it's explained to her how this is going to happen, that the power of the Most High, the Holy Spirit, would overshadow her. 
this would be a virginal conception. And she realized that she could be getting in a lot of trouble. What would Joseph think of this when she says, well, you know, an angel came to me and I'm going to have a baby and you have nothing to do with this, but it's, it's, it was a miracle. So uh, Joseph, when he hears this, uh, prepares to uh, dismiss her quietly rather than make a big thing about her, which, which could result in her being stoned to death. But Mary has the courage to say, let it be done to me according to your word. And she says, behold, the handmaid of the Lord, the servant of God. And St. Paul reminds us that this is the, the fulfillment of everything that had been longed for before. The prophets with their prophecies. Now it all fits together with Christ. And the waiting that the people patiently endured in all their sufferings and being faithful to the covenant that the Lord had given the people of Israel. But now this would be the new covenant. Now this would be expanded to the world. And St. Paul reminded the Romans, to him who's can strengthen you according to my gospel. Now, of course, it's not his private gospel. This is the proclamation to the world. And we need to proclaim this by the way we live, our own putting into effect the gospel of the Lord and proclaim Jesus Christ. And don't expect to be applauded for this, but be expected to, for the Lord to say, well done, good and faithful servant, if we have been faithful, if we have been persevering, if we have been proclaiming the message and salvation found in Jesus Christ. And St. Paul said, this is according to the revelation of the mystery kept secret from a long ages. Well, this is a mystery like, you know, a Miss Marple sort of mystery. It's not, you know, gather everyone into the drawing room and see who killed the butler. No. This is the wonder of God. And this is beyond our putting it into any box that we have. But now this is revealed. And the, uh, the stuff that wasn't evident is now become evident in Jesus Christ. It said, long now manifested through the prophetic writings, rightly interpreted, and according to the command of the eternal God. So God sees this in all eternity because he is eternal love. He is this eternal community of love because love has to be in relationship. And this isn't just to be for the Israelite people. No, this is going to be for everyone. Made known to all nations to bring about the obedience of faith. Not the feeling of faith, not just the beliefs, which are important, to have right beliefs are important. And we must protect the whole deposit of faith and not succumb to the temptation to water everything down so that will be acceptable to the world. Well, should we be acceptable to the world or should we be acceptable to God? Should we be truly honest and expect the rejection of the powers of the world? Or, or do we want to compromise and compromise? Uh, and uh, it, it won't even bring people in. So people say, oh, you know, water everything down, just be nice, don't say things that could be annoying or demanding. But the gospel is demanding. And frankly, a religion that isn't demanding isn't really worth getting into. No, God is very demanding, but he's giving us the grace to live that. He's giving us the reality so that we can be addressed also. Rejoice. Rejoice in all this. Yes, rejoice in the struggles of this world because this isn't all there is. Rejoice because God has come into our mess. God, the eternal word, has become fully human for us. A man like us in all things but sin. And so we are to make known to all the nations to bring about the obedience of faith. Faith is something you live. It's not just something you seal up in your head. 
or something you just have nice feelings about. No, make known to all nations to bring about the obedience of faith. And so may we, like Mary, say, Behold, I am the servant of the Lord. May it be done to me according to your word. And let us stand to proclaim our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed, which can be found in the inner cover, the front page of the Green Book, or for larger print at number 148. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. And I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. God comes to us in our Savior, Jesus Christ and pours out the Holy Spirit upon us that we might live in the obedience of faith and be true witnesses to the whole deposit of the faith in morals as well as in other things. Let us ask the Lord for courage to be people who have the courage to rejoice in the power of the Holy Spirit. The response to these prayers is, Come, Lord Jesus. Dear Lord Jesus, prepare our hearts to welcome you this Christmas. Make our hearts a Bethlehem of love. We pray. Come, Lord Jesus. Jesus, gracious King, we ask that the gift of your peace may descend on Ukraine and the Holy Land and on all troubled places of the earth this holy season. We pray. Come, Lord Jesus. Jesus, make all of us grow in love and devotion to you, our Messiah, in your most beautiful gift of the Eucharist. We pray. Come, Lord Jesus. Gentle Lord Jesus, be with all who are suffering from shootings, wars, floods, in fires and disasters, and protect all refugees across the world, we pray. Come, Lord Jesus. Master, for you, every human being is of immortal value. Protect the unborn and the elderly. Protect our military wherever they serve, we pray. Come, Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus, heal the sick particularly those whose names are in our book of prayer intentions, and especially Dennis DeGisto, Frank Walsh, June Manning, Marilee Medico, Charles Davis, George Lacus, Christine Gardner, Judith Parker, Chloe Callahan, Jim Dennehy, and Robert Alabrandi. Lift their spirits, heal them, and give them peace, we pray. Come, Lord Jesus. Christ, 
you are the salvation of all who die in you. Grant eternal rest to Bernard Smith, David Walcott, for whom there is a funeral mass on Friday at 9 a.m., and Michael Berry and Carol Engman, for whom this mass is being offered. And to all our faithful departed, as well as those in our military who have died serving our country, we pray. Come, Lord Jesus. Come quickly, we pray, Lord Jesus. And do not delay that those who trust in your compassion may find solace and relief in your coming. Grant as we prepare to celebrate the festivities of your nativity, we may possess in gladness your everlasting rewards and live in the hope that no sorrow can extinguish, in the joy that no grief may crush. We ask this in your name of the Father, for you live and reign with him and the Holy Spirit as one God forever and ever. Amen. And let us pray, joining with the angel Gabriel, the Hail Mary. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Our song for the preparation of the gifts can be found in the green book at number 280, The Angel Gabriel from Heaven Came, number 280. Brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. May the Holy Spirit, O Lord, sanctify these gifts laid upon your altar, just as he filled with his power the womb of the Blessed Virgin Mary through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. With your Lift up your hearts. 
let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For all the oracles of the prophets foretold him, the Virgin Mother longed for him with love beyond all telling. John the Baptist sang of his coming and proclaimed his presence when he came. It is by his gift that already we rejoice at the mystery of his nativity, so that he may find us watchful in prayer and exalted in his praise. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Eucharistic Prayer 3. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you and eat of it for this is my body which will be given up for you in a similar way when supper was ended he took the chalice and giving you thanks he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, by your cross and resurrection, you have set us free. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, with St. John the Baptist, St. Anne and Joachim, St. Zechariah and Elizabeth, the Archangel Gabriel, <coughs> St. John of Canty, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence, we rely for unfailing help. 
made this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord. Advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Sean, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. Remember your servants, Michael Beery and Carol Engman, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that they who were united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection, when from the earth he will raise up in the flesh those who have died and transform our lowly body after the pattern of his own glorious body. To our departed brothers and sisters too, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, when you will wipe away every tear from our eyes. For seeing you are God as you are, we shall be like you for all the ages, and praise you without end, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that, by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. The kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, take away the sins of the world. Behold, the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy 
you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and his name will be called Emmanuel. Eternal rest, grant to Michael Beery and Carol Engman, O Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon them with your saints forever, for you are merciful. The dawn from on high will visit us, guiding our feet in the way of peace. The angel said to Mary, Behold, you will conceive and bear a son, and you shall name him Jesus. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door to me, I will enter his house and dine with him and he with me. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. Amen. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. Christ. song for communion can be found in the spirit song book at number 135 come to us number 135 the body of christ the body of christ
body of Christ. Body of Christ. Body of Christ. The Journey Songbook number 551. The Body of Christ. How lovely is your dwelling place. The Body of Christ. The Body of Christ. The Body of Christ. The Body of Christ. The Body of Christ.
Let us pray. Having received this pledge of eternal redemption, we pray, Almighty God, that as the feast day of our salvation draws ever nearer, so we may press forward all the more eagerly to the worthy reception of the mystery of your Son's nativity, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. May the almighty and merciful God, by whose grace you have placed your faith in the first coming of the only begotten Son and yearn for his coming again, sanctify you by the radiance of Christ's advent and enrich you with his blessing. Amen. Amen. As you run the race of this present life, may you make firm in faith, joyful in hope and active in charity. Amen. Amen. So that rejoicing now with devotion at the Redeemer's coming in the flesh, you may be endowed with the rich reward of eternal life when he comes again. Amen. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, Come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. And please be seated for a moment. We have some announcements. So we're still continuing our program on spiritual life online and our Tuesday in person Bible study on the Gospel of John. Check the bulletin. Uh, Tuesdays at 6.30 in the rectory basement conference room. We need to update the email addresses of parishioners. Check the bulletin on how to sign up and help quick communication between our parish and parishioners. Our Beakers program supporting our sister parish in Honduras' scholarship fund has begun and will continue until January 14th. This is a wonderful way to give at Christmas as a family, parents and children together, helping special needs children to receive an education. We are suggesting $250 as a gift, but please give what you can. Check the bulletin. Christmas Eve masses this Sunday will be at 4 p.m both in the upper church, the main church here, and Mary's Chapel, the lower church. And Christmas Day Masses, Monday the 25th, will be at 7.30 and 10 a.m. in the main church. And also, uh, unless you go to Mass, unless you, you, you've been to this Mass, but unless someone uh, goes to Mass on Sunday, for Sunday, if you go to the uh, Christmas four o'clock mass for Christmas, uh, you don't get two at one. It's not a two at one sale. So there's, Chris, there's Sunday, the Sunday obligation, and then the Christmas obligation. So you'd be going to two, two masses there. So uh, Holy Family Cemetery prices have been the same since 2013. They will increase as of the new year. Check the bulletin on how to purchase at the old prices before January 1st. The collection on Christmas will benefit the clergy trust, <coughs> which takes care of the health of priests of the archdiocese in good standing. Thank you in advance for your generosity. There is a plan to have a mission trip to Honduras next June. If you might be interested, check the bulletin. Sounds interesting. And that's that. Our recessional can be found in the Green Book at number 755, soon and very soon, 755. Soon and very soon. 